Hi, I'm George. Tourbox sent me a Tourbox Neo so I can take a look, see what it's like, and tell you what I think about this really interesting controller for use with programs like Photoshop, Lightroom, Premiere, After Effects. Let me show you it right here, sitting right next to my keyboard. There you go. It's not that large, a little larger than a regular mouse, maybe one and a half times the size of a regular mouse. Here you can see a size comparison. That's my hand right here on the controller. Very easy to use. Now, your main controls are these three wheel type controls right in here for doing a lot of your adjustments and then the rest of the buttons can be fully programmed to replace all of your standard keyboard strokes. The first thing I want to mention here is that the build quality is excellent on this. It has a real good solid feel to it. It's fairly heavy so it doesn't move around your desk. It just sits right there, place it down. It's not going to be sliding around or causing any kind of issues like that. So a real quick look here, just one of the things you can do. I'll just go over here to this picture. I'll start off with the scroll wheel, I'll just press that for full screen, and then I'll back out just a little bit. There we go. And I'll grab the lasso toward here. Let's just make a nice little quick lasso right around this figure. There we go. I'm just using a mouse right now. I'm not being really careful about this. Just a real fast selection. Select and mask. I can use the knob and increase or decrease my brush size that easily. And as I go, I can adjust the size depending upon what I need. If I want a little larger size or smaller size, I can just do that very fast right as I'm working. As you can see, making it very easy for this kind of adjustment. I don't have to go up here and do any size adjustments anyplace else. I can do it all right here from that one knob control. Let's switch over to the Toolbox console for a better idea of how this actually works. Here's the Toolbox console. As you can see, I have this set up right now for Photoshop, and it's also set up to auto switch. So if I brought up Lightroom, it would then automatically switch over and change the presets to match the Lightroom presets. Now on the left-hand side, here are the programs that are currently set up for this. Now these are the ones that come default with the Toolbox. I haven't linked these up yet, and the first thing you need to do is to link your program up to the Toolbox console. And to do that, you'll have to have the program running. Let me just bring up Premiere, and then we'll link that in. I now have Premiere Pro running on my desktop. Let's switch back over to the Tourbox console and link the two together. Here's the console. Then I'll link this up. Just go over here. Click where it says Not Set. This then brings up a list of applications that are currently running on your computer. So here's Adobe Premiere Pro. I'll click on that one. Choose OK. And there it is. That's now linked in. And as you can see, my presets over here changed to fit that particular program. Let's go back and take a look at the presets here for Photoshop. Then I'll close down that Premiere Pro while I'm at it. Get that out of the way. There we go. And right down here, there is the Toolbox Neo. And you can see there are lots of buttons and dials and so forth. The main things you care about are the knob in the middle, the dial over here, and the scroll right there. This is what gives you additional functionality, making it very easy to work and do a lot of the things in a natural way that you may have to either type in a number or do a slider control, things like that, which can be a bit clumsy and, of course, take your mouse or your stylus away from your work. You can all do that right here, and I'll do some demonstrating of that in just a minute. Over here on the presets, and I've left these at the defaults, the very top up here, this is the knob. Notice as I roll down that little diagram left-hand side changes to show you which set of presets you're working with. The knob by default is set up for brush size increase and decrease. And then the press, there's nothing set for the press yet. So if I want to, I can just click on this. It then brings up this setting dialog box. I can then go through here and choose how I wanted to have that press function. Lots of options as you can see in here. Just click on it and set that and choose OK. I now have the press function here set for Alt. Perfectly set now for working with the clone stamp tool. Say I wanted to get rid of this bench. I can use the scroll wheel to zoom in on that. There it is. Let's grab that clone stamp tool. Brush size is too big. Again, I'm using the knob in here. That's fine. I'll choose that spot right there and click to clone from. And then there we go. So I'm holding down the knob button instead of using the Alt key because that way I keep my finger right on that knob so I can go back and adjust that knob size as well to get real fast control in here, making this very fast and very easy with the clone stamp tool. This is the fastest way I know of working with a clone stamp tool. The scroll wheel down here, now this is set for zooming, and if you press, it goes full screen. Again, making it very easy to quickly zoom in and out and or go full screen. I'm using that scroll wheel right now, zoom in and out. If I press, it takes me back to full screen. And again, zoom in or zoom out, that easy. Press, back to full screen. The third control here is the dial. And notice that the press also has not been set for this. And this allows you to adjust selected parameters. 
And those are basically things that are inside those little dialog boxes where you type in a number. Let's go back over to Photoshop. Here we go. Say I wanted to put some type on here. I'll just grab the text tool right here and I'll set in a basic size 72 point. Let's set this at a color of white. There we go. And here's some basic type. Okay. Now if I select this and I wanted to change my type size, I can go up here and scroll up or down or come in and type in a different number. But with that dial, I can just spin the dial and adjust the type size that easily right there. Just find exactly the type size that I want just by spinning that dial. You can see how easy and fast that is to get perfect type adjustment. Let's say I wanted to change the color of the type. Click on the color picker right here. And here we have hue, saturation, and brightness. I'll just click into the hue before you come in here and you'd click around till you found a hue you like or you type in a number I'll just click into that box say I wanted to have something around in here click up here but I want to have it more blue I'll just spin this until I get just the right amount of blue again just by spinning that dial let's say I wanted to have it more saturated or a little less saturated click into the saturation right here same thing spin the dial I'm now adjusting just that saturation same thing for brightness click into the brightness right there Okay, let's go back over to that console again. Now, along with those three primary controls, there are all these different buttons. Now, these are basically used to bring over all your keyboard shortcuts that you would use and put them all onto your same hand right here so you can keep your focus on your scroll wheel, the knob, and the dial without having to go back and forth to the keyboard. For instance, our main buttons right down here, here's a tall button and a short button, and there's a side button right over here and a top button. That's the section right here, your prime four selection. The side button is set as your control key, the top is set as your shift key, the tall set as the alt, and the short is set at the space. These are your standard keys you'll be using all the time. And then right here on the tour box, down here you have an additional kit area, your standard D-pad. If I scroll down a little bit, so you can see that. Here we go. And then on our four basic keys, we have the up, down, left, and right keys in here. These correspond to bringing up different tool sets. Here's your eraser tools, is your up, down is your stamp tools, left side is your healing tools, and right side are your brush tools. So real fast to choose your different tool sets. I've just switched over here to Lightroom Classic, and let's see how the tour box works here with Lightroom. Now, this is gonna be working in the develop section. It doesn't work in your library, map, book, any of those, but it's specific to your develop section in here. So here we have a picture opened up inside of develop. Let's now take a look at the tour box. Notice that as I switched over here to Lightroom, that it's now giving me the Lightroom presets right down here. Here's our basic section. The top section here, the knob, this is now adjusting the selected slider. Now you choose or select the slider by using one of your prime four buttons right down here, your side, top, tall, or short buttons. Side is tint, top is temp, tall is exposure, and short is contrast. These are next to each other and those are next to each other. We'll see that in just a second. The scroll simply adjusts your hue, saturation, and luminance, and it switches over there to that HSL. So you have that option with the scroll wheel. The dial works kind of like the combination of the knob and the prime four section. In this case though, it adjusts the slider, but it adjusts the slider that you're looking at, mouse pointing. We'll see how that works in just a second. Now the kit section down here, again, that's these four buttons right down here. Up is your highlights, down is your shadows, left is your blacks, and right is your whites. And then finally your tour button, which is this little button right here, right to the left-hand side of the knob that resets the selected slider back to its default position. Okay, let's see how this whole thing works. I'll bring back up Lightroom. Here we go. Now we'll start off with our buttons. I'll do the short button first, that's contrast, and I'll turn the knob, and notice over here, that contrast is turning. Doesn't matter what I'm pointing at, it's now locked into that contrast. If I hit that tour button, notice how the contrast resets back to the default setting, which is your zero. Do the tall button, that's your exposure. Same thing, exposure is now being adjusted right there. And if I'm not happy with that, just hit that tour button, it takes us back to the default setting. The top button is your temperature, and that's right up here, your temp. Same thing, you can adjust the temp just by rotating that knob. And again, tour button, back to the default. And the left, that's your tint. Again, same thing, rotate the knob, and you get that tint adjustment, and we'll go back to our default setting. Now, I like working with the dial, and that's about the dial is if you roll over one of your settings in here like that, you can then spin the dial. Let's say I do tint, there we go. Or if I do temp right there, just seems a very, very fast way because I have my finger on the dial and I can then very quickly adjust it just by moving the mouse over what I want to adjust. And then your highlight shadows, whites and blacks down here, that is your kit button. 
Top button is your highlights. I'll do the knob on that. The bottom button is your shadows. I'll do the knob again right here. The left button is your blacks. You see the blacks are adjusting in there. Even though I'm over the shadows, the blacks are adjusting. And the right side is the whites. And there we go. And I'll just reset those just by clicking on the button and then hit that tour button and that resets that setting. So it's that easy to use. And again, very intuitive to work with the tour box just by running through your controls right down here. So the whole thing is focused right in this section right in here with the exception of the scroll wheel, which is your hue saturation and luminance, which is right down in this section right here. So if I click on that, when that's open, it brings up that setting. I can then use the scroll wheel to choose which one I'm working with here. Click again to change which setting you're working with. Click it again for your next setting and choose your color. Click it again so you can press down on the scroll wheel to cycle through and then use the scroll wheel to move the selection up and down your color sets. So there you go, that's working with the tour box here inside of Lightroom Classic. Let's now switch over and take a look at this inside of Premiere Pro. Okay, here we are inside of Premiere Pro and here's just a little fast video clip. There we go, kind of fun. I'll just go back to the beginning here and let's take a look at the tour box. Go back to the console. There we go. Now notice that Premiere has two sets of presets, one for editing and one for color. Here's the editing preset and then I'll click over here to color and notice how things change a little bit for color. With the edit, we have our knob doing a move selection page up and down. The scroll is zoom in, zoom out. This is of your timeline. Dial is going to move the timeline pointer. And then your basic buttons in here, your side is your selection tool. Tall is alt, short is play. We'll see that in just a second. And your kit down here is clear in and out, razor tool, mark in and mark out. Now if we go over here to the color, things change a little bit, but notice down here the kit section has now changed and we now have our color controls right down in there. Okay, let's see how this works. Go back here to the edit and take a fast look at Premiere Pro. There we go. We'll start off with the knob and then watch the timeline down here. Notice at the bottom down here, I'm actually scrolling through the whole timeline a page at a time. I have very short clips. That's all just on the first section here, but the knob is letting me scroll through like that. If I use the scroll wheel, I can zoom in or out of the timeline, or if I press, that zooms in on that one section. So you can use that to zoom in and out of your timeline. And then the dial allows you to move the playhead just like that. So you can kind of scrub back and forth and work with the playhead and get just the spot that you want. Real easy way to control where you want to be editing. And then finally the short button, that's your play button. Click it once to play, click it again to stop, play and stop just like that. And I'll go back there to the beginning. So as you can see, this really is very easy to use with your editing as well. Simply get comfortable with what the different controls do and it can then speed up a lot of those basic settings. Let's switch back over to the tour box console and we'll look at our controls down here. Left is mark in and right is mark out. Let's see how this little bit works for us. We'll go back over here to Premiere. I'm going to use the dial and we'll just find a nice little spot like right about here. That's pretty good. I'm going to use the left and I'll mark that as my in and then I'll go over here until it just comes out. Let's see right about there and then that right button on the kit. That's my out. So let's quickly mark the in and the out positions here using the kit controls. That was just the left and the right direction buttons. Let's now switch over here to the Premier Color. And again, just a couple adjustments down in here. Notice that the dial is now adjusting our selected slider as opposed to going through or adjusting our timeline. And then down here we have temperature, tint, exposure, and contrast. Let's take a look and see how that works on that one clip. And I'll pull this back a little bit to get the car in there. There we go, that's a pretty good spot right there. And let's switch over here to the color section. There we go, working in Premiere Color right now. So here's our histogram left hand side and then here's our basic image. I'll start off with the top button in the kit section, that's our temperature. And again, the dial is now controlling that slider. So I can adjust my temperature right here, see how fast that goes. And right hand side, you can see that slider is adjusting right there. The left control is exposure. You see right over here, I'll just rotate that dial again. And there you go, there's the exposure adjustment. The right is your contrast, that's just below here. Again, same thing. Rotate the dial to adjust the contrast. There we go. And the bottom button is the tint, and that's right up here. Same thing. Rotate the dial, and there is our tint control. Giving you very fast control of your four main controls right in here. Temperature, your tint, your exposure, and your contrast. And let's go back to our assembly. So there you go. That's working with the tour box here inside of Premiere Pro. Now you've seen these four presets up here, but you also can download additional presets right from the Toolbox website. Let's switch over there and I'll show you that. There we go. 
Let's go over here where it says downloads and come down to presets. And there's a whole bunch of presets in here for a lot of your standard programs. There's your Photoshop and Lightroom. These, of course, come with the toolbox pre-installed. But there's also presets in here for Affinity Photo, Capture One. There's DaVinci Resolve right here. After Effects down here. Here's Illustrator, Corel Draw, Final Cut Pro. So lots of different presets available. Or just scroll down. You can search by language. They're in different languages as well. When you find one that you want to use, just click on the download button. Or you can just enter these manually. Let's switch back over to the console again. Here we are. This is my Photoshop Elements section. All you have to do is just to click in here and choose what you want to have it do. Or just type in the keyboard shortcut that you want to have it set for. Make sure you're in that program when you're doing this. And we'll then set up that particular control for that particular keyboard press. So there you go. That's the Toolbox controller. And as you can see, it's one of the best productivity tools I've ever seen for working in programs like Photoshop, as we saw here, or Lightroom, or Premiere Pro, or actually just about any program you want because it's fully customizable and you can adapt this and adapt the presets to work with any program that you want to link up to the Toolbox to really improve the ease of working with your programs and also improve the speed of doing things such as we saw right there with that clone stamp tool. I'll put a link so you can find out more about this in the description and I'll see you next time.